the live on Instagram to to play with. Okay, so hello everybody, um, all fans of temple touring and uh, otherwise. Um, we are continuing our series on missionary homecomings called um, Homecoming Chats, and today we are with the lovely and talented Grace Hancock. There you go. <laughs> Isn't she great? I want to call you Gracie Lou Freebush. You. <laughs> You can call me Gracie Lou Freebush if you would like. <laughs> I just can't help myself. I'm like, uh, 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 oh, oh, it was such a good movie. I agree. I haven't seen it in so long. Oh, I know. I think it might still be on Netflix. It's worth looking into. I'm looking for it. And if you don't know what we're talking about, we are talking about none other than this fabulous Sandra Bullock in Miss Congeniality. <laughs> one of my favorite movies. Oh, it's one of the best. It's so campy. It's wonderful. Yes. So, um, to welcome everybody here, um, we are going to um, get started. We, we're going to have um, Grace introduce herself, tell us, tell us a little bit about herself, um, and then we are going to listen to some of her mission experiences and how that has affected her mental and emotional state, because we love that. And um, yeah, so you're from Castor Valley, California. Yes, I am. Where is that? So, East Bay, right next to San Francisco. It's pretty close, about half oh, really? an hour away from San Francisco. Seriously? Mm -hmm. That is, it is a beautiful area. It is a very dry area. Yes. It is ca cattle country, I want to say? Almost. Almost. It used to be chicken farms. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. No. Feeding America. Yes. <laughs> close to the... To the obviously to to, to the ocean, mm -hmm. which did you get to go very often? Was that like a weekend thing? You know, the beaches in the Bay Area are cold. That's true. Yeah, so you they're not really suits. surfing. Yeah, uh, so you need wetsuits. Um, and so we would go for picnics every once in a while, mm, but we wouldn't usually go to lounge on. That does the make sense. Beaches. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I know. Quite a few people from that area have been a few times. Went to the Oakland Open House last year. Yeah. Oh, man, that was awesome. I was on my mission for that, and so I didn't get to see oh, it. Oh, you didn't? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. We got to go for media day, and we got to talk to Elder Stevenson and Sister Carden. And that's oh on um, Temple Touring in this page. If you scroll down, um, you can watch our interviews with them. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. That's what my family told me. It was so... I more beautiful than I remember it when I went a few years ago. Oh my gosh, it was oh, just amazing. <sighs> I believe it. Yeah, so there's that. So, okay, so were you born and raised in Castor Valley? Okay, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I was born and raised in Castor Valley, California. Just like she said, it's close to Oakland as well. And um, my my dad has always lived in Castor Valley as well. I have a lot of family there. And, um, I really like Castro Valley because there is, um, a really great community of diversity. And so I really learned to have a lot of love for everyone that I came in contact with. And, and I loved growing up in Castro Valley. I had a great ward. I, I grew to have some really wonderful friends. Um, I really liked living in Castro Valley. And once it came time to come to, to school here in, in Provo, I'm going to BYU. Um, I was sad to leave. It was time, but I was sad to leave. It's Castro is always going to have a special place in my heart. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Tell me about when you got your mission call. What was, what was that when you heard Tampa, Florida? Well, I actually opened up my mission call twice. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, sealed and resealed? <laughs> well, actually, so I got it. I was one of the first people who got it on the computer. Oh, to the email. okay. Okay. And so I got the email that I had received it on a Tuesday okay. and I was trying to figure out with my family when I could open it so that my sister and my close friends could be at the house sure. with me. And the only time that it was going to work was, was going to be on Wednesday. Sure. So I was going to have to wait for a full day that, to open my mission and call. if you've had to wait, you know how brutal that is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I had to wait like four hours and I was chomping at the bit. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. So my solution was that I didn't wait until the next day. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. And so I'm a music major, so 
I went to one of the practice rooms in the basement of, of the HVAC. And I, so you could scream out I loud. Yes! <laughs> and so I had it and I opened it. And actually, no, I started practicing and I realized that I could open it by myself and it didn't matter. It was about me. And yeah. Right. It's your call. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had a really wonderful experience opening it by myself, feeling like that was right for me. The Tampa, Florida was right for me. Mm. And that was a really special experience um, because I felt like Florida was going to make me, my mission was going to make me someone who I wanted to be in the person that Heavenly Father wanted me to be. And mm -hmm. I could kind of, I could see that. I could see that that was going to be um, a positive, wonderful, great thing that I was yeah. supposed to do. Yeah. And then the next day I opened it with my friends and family and that was wonderful as well. And yeah. so I opened it twice. <laughs> ah, see, and you got to, you got to experience your own personal moment mm -hmm. and then experience it with family and friends knowing that they were just as happy as you were. So I think it might've been better. Because I liked then, it. <laughs> yeah. Cause then you get your own moment and then you can like focus on them enjoying it too. Mm -hmm. That's actually really smart. Maybe something to look into. I don't know. Hmm. I can donate. Yeah. I think it's great. There you go. There you go. A music major. Tell me about that. What yeah. do you play? So I'm a vocalist. Oh, my, oh, well, I knew that because she sings a lot. We might have to do that. All the time. We, we might have to do that later. If you want to. Okay. We that. might. You know, yeah. maybe. But. Yeah. Cool. So so you're going to BYU um, music major. Mm -hmm. Vocal performance. Okay. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? Well, I would love... So... I don't have a set, like, this is the only thing that I want to do, kind of a plan. Mm, right. But I have always loved choral music, and so what okay. I would love to do is to sing in a professional choir for my job. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, there is a pretty good choir up the road. They're not professional, but, you know, they have been on the radio for well over, was it 75 years, I want to say? Something like that. They're called the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. <laughs> um, they're pretty good. I don't know if you've heard of them. Look they're them up. They're pretty good. You know, they do some decent work. <laughs> Um, yeah, but you know what? That would be really, really cool. Yeah. That would be really cool. W would you want to teach ever? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I've always thought that, that teaching is definitely something that's going to be a part of my plan, part of my path, whether it's before or after I'm mm. in a choir, a professional choir, I do expect and hope to teach. That's great. Yeah. You know what? They're going to love you. I hope They're so. going to love you. And you're, so, you're pocket sized. They're gonna run all over you. You're gonna have to wear a lot of heels. Like That's okay. I can stilettos. Do that. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, you know those heels you wore last time were just so cute. I almost <laughs> took them, but you got like size five feet. My big honking lugs are not gonna work on that. So. <laughs> Don't let that stop you. Yeah. <laughs> In my big toe. <laughs> My big toe. Um, okay, well, let's see. I wanted to um, ask you a few more questions. Um, so, like, when they did they give you an option to stay in the mission field or to be reassigned? Mm -hmm. Okay, what was that like? For my specific case, I was given an option. Um, and my mission president called me and asked me if, um, if I would like to be um, considered to, if I would consider going home and he gave me the choice to think about it and um, and so I took some time to think about it I talked to my family I mainly talked to my mom about it and I came to the conclusion that I thought that it would be a good idea given the circumstances um, uh, to to go home mm -hmm. and that was a weird decision to make yeah because I had to decide between well, it wasn't even really a decision between like going home and, and staying out, but it was, it was trying to figure out what Heavenly Father wanted. Mm. And, and I feel so strongly and I have now come to love so much the Lord's will, um, that I didn't want to make a mistake. And I felt like, I mean, that's, that was a big decision to make for me and, and having to decide I think it's the right thing to go home. I think that's what Heavenly Father mm -hmm. wants was a big decision to make. And I was mm -hmm. worried about it. Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I've had those, like even the decision to serve a mission, it was kind of a, um, the Lord will love you no matter what, and mm -hmm. it will be okay no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have trials no matter what. Yes. So do what you want to do kind of thing. And it, that was... I don't know if that was confusing or no, it was confusing. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what it was. It was confusing. <laughs> and so it was like, just 
go with your gut. And I'm like, okay, if I had a gut, I would go with it. I'll go with, let's serve a mission. So, yeah. so, you know, when you're doing something good and, and, and you're trying to be of service, he's never going to turn that down. Yeah. You know, I love that. And then he knows that you're going to be of service no matter where you go. Mm-hmm. So go where you need to go. Yeah. So, Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say hi to Jen, who's watching. Hi to Jelaine and Sherry Wilpink and Linda Hendrickson. Thank you for the loves. Um, when, what I'd like to ask you now is, is there a particular mission experience that has, and you're smiling, I already yeah. know. <laughs> See, I already know. Uh, that has basically changed your life. I know. Try to pick one. I know. I, <laughs> I think instead of one particular experience, I have kind of a feeling that yeah. I've that I've come to oh, recognize. Yeah. Go for that. Um, something that I loved serving a Spanish mission was um, learning about Hispanic cultures and and the cultures of different um, of different countries and different mm-hmm. peoples, and that was something that I really loved. And Did something... you know in part Hispanic? What's that? I'm part Hispanic. By oh, the way. I didn't know that. Yes, I am. Wow. So, so soy Chicana. <laughs> soy Chicana. Okay, I'm just going to let that one go. Sorry, I won't even try. My bad. Go ahead. No, you're great. <laughs> so, I I learned to love this this feeling of value and family and and time together and and this glue that that binds these families together and there was a lot of times that we would come to a member's house after church where all the rest of the members were there as well and and we would just eat food and talk to people and and just be a family right and I have these wonderful memories sitting at the kitchen table with um, some of our favorite members or, or having dessert with, with the people that we were teaching and there were kids running all over the mm. place. But these little moments of having time with this family laughing or talking about the gospel or not or t- just talking about their lives or yeah. talking about things that mattered to them yeah. made me really understand the value of... Um, having this spirit in a home because mm-hmm. you can tell the difference oh absolutely you, you really can tell can. the difference for sure and when the spirit was in a home it was a happy home sure and um and I got to feel that in in each family's unique way the way that the spirit molded their particular home yeah um to who that family was yeah and so there were a whole bunch of families that I that I met that had that in a different way and and it just, I just felt like I had a million different families, a million different homes. I could go to and still a million feel. different kitchens. Yeah. yeah. Just, and yeah. still feel like it was my home. Right. Like, like how the gospel is applicable to everyone, but it is specifically applied to you in your life. And I think that's the same thing, like learning how the spirit talks to you, learning how Heavenly Father communicates with you, and in that own unique way, how that happens for you. And I think it happens in everybody else's, in, in individual homes. Um, you know, not everybody is as pious or saintly as we would not hope. As we would think. As we would expect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, we we might be LDS, but we're definitely not perfect. And we're definitely not, like... Not perfect. Not perfect. <laughs> not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but but we try, and it's the effort of trying to treat each other with kindness and with love that makes the biggest difference. I think, in my opinion. I so, agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there um, is there somebody that you that you taught that you remember the most? The most, the most, um, uh, or you know, up there because we don't want to offend anybody in the Tampa, Florida of mission. Of course, <laughs> I. That's a great question. I feel like everyone that I taught holds a very specific and a very unique spot in my heart. They have their little hole that that, that they lives, fill. That they fill. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I specifically remember the first family that I taught. My very first lesson when I got to Tampa. My very first um, people who decided to be baptized. Them, uh, this family was was just. There were three couples um, living in the same house, all with kids. There were there were a bunch of people living in a too small apartment. Right. Um, but they were so generous to us, to each other. Mm. It, that was one of the moments where I felt like a family. Yeah. And 
And I remember so many just little moments where I would notice that the spirit would touch Karen's heart or the spirit would touch Yvonne's heart or Mara's. And, and these little moments of, of coloring with the kids. And, and that family is always going to be really special to me. Sure. Just the way that we created connections with them because of the gospel mm -hmm. and with the gospel. Yeah. And, and just seeing the way that they accepted the gospel individually it wasn't it wasn't just the whole family got baptized it was it was one by one very much yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome that's awesome um if you could give somebody advice who's going to be serving or going out in kind of this uncertain time um what would you say to them that's a hard question um i think that i would say Focus on seeing the way that God speaks to you specifically because that was what gave me comfort and what helped me when I was in this uncertain time when I was still serving my mission and COVID happened and I did, I had no idea what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. We Cause had, they don't tell you. We, yeah. We had, we had limited information, um, just because not all of the information pertained to us and, um, and knowing that it was all going to work out because I understood the, the love that Heavenly Father has for me mm. got me through it. Yeah. And so I would say that if there's anything that I would study or anything that I would work on would be um, learning how to hear him, really. Yeah. <laughs> learning how to, how to listen to what Heavenly Father is saying yeah. to you as an individual. Yeah. Because that's what's going to get us all through this. Yeah. Because you can't go off of somebody else's testimony or, you know, what they tell you. Yeah, I mean, your parents are there to teach you that. But ultimately, it is your testimony that is going to be either strengthened or diminished and hopefully strengthened yeah. um, by this situation. I, Kamei, in her, she talked about uh, her homecoming chat. She talked about spiritually defining moments, which went back to... Uh, an experience that I had where the um, ministers, my ministers came to the house and gave me the sacrament and it was just me. And I got super emotional because as they were blessing and passing the sacrament to just me, I realized he says the savior would have done this just for me. And I can't, I can, I'm still overwhelmed by it because it, it's going to take a long time to process that but the atonement and what that means and and how this thing that we're experiencing together worldwide how it's it's gonna it's gonna make or break us spiritually i think specifically spiritually yeah. um you know we hear about um, plagues and all of these things in the scriptures and how they are brought to these groups of people to help them to remember the Lord their God and help them to remember why they're here and what the purpose is and you know whoosh, sweep you into shape kind of yeah. thing you know yeah. we have to choose you have to choose it's ultimately ultimately you have to choose no one's going to choose for you yeah um, um, is there anything else that you would like to share with the fine people who are watching us I think, well, the most important thing that I learned in my mission was that God loves me. That was, I mean, I learned a bajillion things. I wrote down a list of things that I learned, and there are a bajillion more than the hundred that I wrote down. But the most important thing that I learned was that God loves me. And I think that goes along with what I would suggest to learn how God talks to you. But I think, I think finding out for yourself that God loves you, you're going to be okay if yeah. you do that. Yeah. Um... Tell me about how this has changed your relationship with your Heavenly Father it's more Jesus personal. Christ. Yeah. It's it's much more personal. I feel like they're my friends um, and not only my parent and my brother. I think uh, you can like someone and love them. And I mean like with your parents or with your siblings, you can love them all the time and you don't have to like them all the time. And And I learned to see my heavenly father and my savior Jesus Christ is more than just my brother and my father. They're now my friends. And, um, I can see myself more accurately because I understand how they see me just a little bit more. 
Um, but my relationship has grown stronger with each of them. Nice. Seeing yourself more the way that they see you, I think that that is a huge goal in my life as well. Um, you know, there are so many people that can come into your life that will knock you down and make you think that you are less than a child of God. And um, starting to realize that again is, I think, one of the most important things in life. I think you're totally right about that. I think once we know who we are, other things become a lot easier to take on. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty let's good. See, let's see if there's anything else that, that we want to talk about. Or unless anybody else has questions. Oh, oh, I see you guys. Oh, hi, Lainey. <laughs> okay. Um, now, one thing that I really like to talk about um, with everybody that comes on Temple Touring, if I get the chance, mind you, because sometimes it's that brief, um, is your mental and emotional state coming out of the mission. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like going in? Because you had all the preparation. Mm -hmm. we, we talk a lot about preparation. You go to the classes, all of this. You get there, and it's not what you're expecting. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> not at all what you're not expecting. Um, and it, at that point in your life, the hardest thing that you're taking on. Um, tell us about your mental health journey. So going into the mission was an adjustment, just like it is for everyone. And as I grew and learned and learned how to be a missionary and how to be grace at the same time as being Ramona Hancock um, and dealing with all the pressures and the rejection and, and, and the self-pressure that I put on myself and the pressure from other missionaries and from just pressure. Yeah. Um, but mostly my own expectations that I put on myself mm -hmm. um, helped me to realize that I was dealing with mental illness. And um, I learned that I was dealing with anxiety and depression. And throughout my entire mission, I dealt with that. And uh, I, I dealt with it with the help of wonderful companions, with the help of wonderful mission leaders, with the help of counselors. And, um, and it was a sacred experience to figure out, to be able to, just like I said before, to learn that God loved me through this, this wall that I felt like I, like I had, this blanket that was, that was making things seem not as they were. I couldn't see things accurately because of my mental health. Mm. Um, and I was still able to get through that um, and understand that Heavenly Father loves me for who I am and understand that love for me just a little bit more, just yeah. enough to, to have that confidence to say that, yes, I'm a child of God and yeah. we're good. And um, to be clear, it did not happen when I was in the dumps. I did not realize that everything was perfect and that everything was going to be okay when I wasn't okay. It, it was very small and there were little steps and little things that I didn't realize were, were um, leading me up to understanding that until I understood it. Um, and so I could look back and I now can look back and see that those were things those that were, were, yes, that they were steps, that they were a little, little trail were, of breadcrumbs or something. A little trail of breadcrumbs. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but through all of that, I had to navigate this, this mental health stuff that I hadn't had to before. And since coming home, it's also been an adjustment and I haven't stopped dealing with my mental issues and, or nor my emotional issues. And, um, but I never stop saying to my family or my friends that I feel like I'm a happy person. I have always felt like I'm yeah. a cheerful, happy person. Yeah, you totally are. Thank you. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just because people deal with, with mental illness doesn't mean that they can't be a happy person or they yeah. can't be excited about things. Yeah. And, um, and so coming home from my mission, making the decision to come home, um, actually coming home and trying to continue my life in the midst of this pandemic, nonetheless. Right. Um, <laughs> I know it's just, it's all been a lot. Yeah. And so, and so I've had a really wonderful time talking with people who are dealing with similar things as me and, um, and working with, with my friends who, who feel like things are off. And I can explain to them, I understand how this feels. I'm also dealing with this. And this is normal because things are weird right now. Yeah. And 
and that's okay. That is okay. It's very okay. Yeah. Like I'm doing, I'm doing okay. Yeah. And I don't think that we have to be great all the time, especially right now. Yeah. Um, and, but yes, I, coming home and adjusting, coming into the mission, adjusting, um, figuring out who I am now, who I was and, and kind of coming to terms with my mission and coming to terms with my life now is this weird journey that I know is important. And it's going to be fine too. Yeah. Like that's going to be fine. It's, it's going to be, be hard. It's going to be hard. Oh yeah. Hard. But it's going to be worth it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be so worth it. And you're going to do great things. Thank you. Yeah. I hope so. You totally are. <laughs> you totally are. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is awesome. Um, okay. What's your favorite temple that we always address? My favorite temple is the Oakland Temple. Of course. <laughs> is anyone surprised? Uh, not really. Not really. I think it's pretty great myself. But, you know. It's only because I've been it. to that one. I look forward to making all of them my, my favorites as I get around the world. That would be good. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. I think that would be. And I think I might just do that. I think I will. Um, <laughs> when the temples f fully reopen, mm -hmm. which one are you going to visit first? Because you have like six around here. I do. I think maybe, maybe the Provo City Center temple. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because that was the one that I went through. Mm. For the first time. Oh, really? Not not Oakland. Not Oakland. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. A little tidbit of information about Grace Hancock. More about me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. I think maybe. You know what? We're gonna do one more thing because I'm I'm on the fly here. I'm on the fly. I think someone has a question. Oh. What's been your biggest adjustment since you've been home, says Lainey CK. Good Let's question. see. That's a great question. You answer that while I look for this. Okay. My biggest adjustment. Um, that's a really good question. I've had just a lot of things. I think <laughs> coming home has to adjust to a lot of things. I think a big adjustment has been managing my relationships hmm. with friends. Um, with family, it's always been easy. I, uh, I love my family. I love my sisters. I love my parents. I think, but I just, but managing my relationships with my friends, I want to give everyone the time that I feel that they deserve. Um, but I also sometimes now I feel overwhelmed by having to communicate with people. And I feel like that's a lot of things to do. A lot of people to text yeah. back, a lot of people to call. Yeah. And I love people. I'm an extrovert and and people are essential to my mental health and my general happiness. <laughs> and and so that's been kind of interesting to figure out that that now I can talk to people on my own time and that that's important especially now to yeah. keep those human connections oh, incredibly. And it's it's for me now. Yeah. Um and so that's I think that's been probably the biggest adjustment. Yeah. 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 I like that. And I don't even have anything else to say about it because it's all completely true and it's all com <laughs> completely awesome. So, um, let's see now I think, yeah. Okay. Hey Chelsea. Um, and Nick, um, what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to have you pick a card from the deck. I'm going to take out the white ones cause those, those don't work. Okay. okay. Pick a card from the deck and you can dig for it too. Okay, I want this one. Okay, read it out loud, show the folks, and then give your best answer. What do you spend too much time doing? <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Um, I spend too much time going on Instagram watching funny videos of dogs. Huh? Of dogs. Specifically, of dogs. Specifically, not specifically just animals? Dogs. No, they can be animals, but I really like the golden retriever ones. Those are, I mean... A golden retriever. I don't know that there's a better dog. Well, I, I don't know. Border Collie's pretty good. Cute. Because I have a little niece that's a Border Collie. She's pretty awesome. <sighs> but, great. you know. But jo dogs in general. I mean, oh. Okay. I I could go off. I that's, could go off and on and off and on and off That's what I spend too much time doing. Yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> I think, you know, if those are the videos you're going to watch, yeah. I think that's pretty awesome. That and watching <laughs> The Office. I think those are the Ooh, things that I spend yeah. too much time yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> I, I watched the entire series in the matter of like a couple of weeks and that's that impressive. was, well, you know, the things you do, the things you do. So anyway, um, if you wouldn't mind, um, giving us a verse of your favorite hymn, 
I okay. know. I totally <laughs> did. I totally did. I totally did. Um, All and right. then, um, any closing remarks that you would like to give the people at home? Closing remarks. Yes. That's a great question. Um, I think that the most important thing that we can do right now, um, is focus on, on keeping connections and being united and, and staying close to our family and friends. Um, reach out to the missionaries that you know that are serving right now because it's weird and honestly it's, it's pretty lonely right now especially. Um, and I have a very firm testimony that the gospel is, is, is grown through relationships between people. It's about people and covenants. And, um, and I know that, that we're meant to love each other. People are meant to love each other. We're meant to learn more about each other. We're meant to, we're meant to make sacrifices. We're meant to, to learn to love, um, because Jesus Christ is, is love. He's, he's the definition of love. Everything that he does and did is and was out of love. Um, and if we're trying to become more like him, then we should learn how to love better. We should learn how to love more. And that doesn't mean that you have to do crazy amount of things. You don't have to change everything about yourself today. Um, because the spirit doesn't overwhelm you in a negative way. The spirit doesn't, isn't going to give you anxiety about how much you have to do. Um, he's going to tell you what you have to do one thing at a time and you're going to feel calm about it. Um, so I have a, a testimony that the gospels is founded on love and that as people, we can grow that. I love it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, I, over the last couple of years, have grown to know and love my Heavenly Father and my Savior more deeply. Um, I, I can think of only one other time in my life where I have felt as much love from my Heavenly Father, um, and that was like four years ago. But over the last two years, year and a half, and I would say even specifically over the last six months where um, I'm dealing with the death of my sister. And uh, it, seeing her more as an eternal person, an eternal being, as, a, as opposed to a temporal person. Um, just knowing that it's all about love. It's all about love. He, the reason that we're here, the world was created, the plan... <sighs> everything is love. The ultimate goal is love. And I know it's, it seems trite. It seems easy to say, and it is easy to say, but it's the truth. And the more you think about it and the more you ask about it, the more you ponder about it, um, the deeper the levels go. So thank you so much for sharing that. Happy to share. Oh. So we're going to have a little song by Sister Grace Hancock. And, oh, before we do that, no, 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 well, no, 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 I'm changing my mind. Sing the song, and then we're going to um, leave them with a Spanish door approach. Because ah, 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 we can. Okay, sounds good. I remember mine, by the way. You do? I totally do. Okay, I want to hear it after we'll, singing this. We'll, like, go together. Okay, sounds okay, good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my sin. Awesome. Um, thank you for joining us for this 
particular episode of Missionary Chats, Missionary Homecoming Chats, with Grace Hancock. Um, and let's let's give our door approach at the same time. Let's see if there's because <laughs> I, I want to see if they're the same. I want to see if they're same. Messy. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, all right. Hola, ¿cómo estás? 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 I think I may have done that on purpose, but I can't be sure. So, um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it might have been. Um, we're looking to do a couple more of these in, this week. So um, be sure to watch for our notifications and to tune in at th that time. And um, we love you. And thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Let's do this one. Oh, how do I turn that one off? End, end. right there. Yeah, okay. We're going to end that yeah. one. Okay, and finish that one. Yeah. And then...